On the occasion of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, heads of all the diplomatic missions in Israel called on President Ben Svi in Jerusalem. The Argentinian minister, acting dying of the Di diplomatic corps, presented greetings on behalf of his distinguished colleagues. The religious holiday period was climaxed with the colorful Feast of Sukkot, Festival of Tabernacles, celebrated with the symbols of the citron and the palm branch, which these busy Jerusalemites are carefully choosing at the central market, and the building of a booth or sukkah covered by palm fronds to remind them of the shelter afforded the children of Israel during their wanderings in the wilderness. The booths are decorated with the produce of orchard and field, for Sukkot is also the festival of the first fruits. Orthodox Jews spend the festival days in these booths, in celebration and in holy discourse. Eilat, Israel's southernmost port on the Gulf of Aqaba and the newest boom town, celebrated the opening of its new hospital this month. The whole town turned out for the occasion and welcomed the Minister of Health who took part in the ceremony. His first visit inside was to the maternity ward with a reward for the pioneer. But the baby didn't wait for the official opening of the hospital and was born the day before. Chess is one of Israel's national sports and the ninth national chess championships held in Tel Aviv draws fans from all over the country who followed the play with an interest as deep and intense as the masters themselves. Women and men, youngsters and veterans, plan their strategy and make their tactical moves on the board with an ingenuity worthy of military commanders in the field. Some of the plays will find an honored place in the chess manuals of the world. In the Druze village of Yirka in the Galilee, in northern Israel, the venerable dignitaries lead the villagers in a festive reception in honor of Druze soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces. The Druze units have played and continue to play an impressive part in the Israel army. As a token of their pride in their son's service, they regale them with a sumptuous spread in real Druze tradition. This is the month of the annual trophy sailing race, when every Israel sailing club competes in a dash from Haifa to Jaffa. The pirate's flag betokens unseasonable weather, but although the wind is high and the sea choppy, everyone agrees to brave it. After they sail, the seamen spending as much energy in keeping their vessels from overturning as in making headway against storm and current. But the elements proved too strong. And some vessels didn't make it. Rescue boats fished the competitors from the drink and the race was abandoned. But all were proud of the glorious try. Crossing into Israel from Lebanon through with the Israel-Lebanese frontier post is United States Senator Burke Hickenlooper here on a fact-finding study tour of the Middle and Far East. There are friendly exchanges between Israel officials and the Lebanese frontier guard. Senator Hickenlooper is a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Another visitor this month was Chief Claudius Doza Akran, Minister of Development for Western Nigeria, who came to see how Israel is tackling her development problems. He met Israel's leaders and inspected development projects. In Jerusalem, he lays a wreath on Herzl's grave. Later, he is taken on a tour of the city. The friendship between El Salvador and Israel was highlighted this month by the visit of the Foreign Minister of El Salvador, Alfredo Ortiz Mancha. At a special ceremony in Jerusalem, he invested President Ben Svi with the highest order of his country. This is the Grand Gold Cross of the Order of Jose Maria Delgado, Liberator of El Salvador. The most famous photographic exhibition in the world, The Family of Man, 
often in Tel Aviv under the auspices of the United States Information Services. The 500 photographic works of art from 68 countries were chosen by Steichen, the Dean of World Photographers, from two million photographs submitted. They express the joys and sufferings, emotions and aspirations common to all members of the family of man, irrespective of color, race or creed. cultural event this month was the completion of the new Tel Aviv Cultural Center and Frederick Mann Concert Auditorium, regarded as one of the finest concert halls in the world. The builders were still adding their final touches as preparations went forward for the ceremonial opening under the baton of guest conductor Leonard Bernstein. To test the acoustics, Bernstein goes through a rehearsal with the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra before an audience of delighted soldiers. And then came the big night, the gala opening. It was attended by distinguished visitors, diplomats, and Israel leaders in all walks of life, including the Prime Minister and the President. Three international musical celebrities took part in the opening concert as soloists, pianist Arthur Rubinstein, violinist Isaac Stern, and cellist Paul Tortelier. Later, at the Prime Minister's garden party, Rubinstein and Leonard Bernstein were guests of honor. Together with Tortelier and Isaac Stern, seen with philanthropist Frederick Mann. <laughs> Units of the Armored Corps of the Israel Defense Forces were on maneuvers this month. Modern military attaches are among those who see the tanks being put through their paces. Great emphasis is placed on the varied use of armor and on the handling of tanks even in unfavorable terrain. The Armored Corps has absorbed many of the lessons learned during the Sinai fighting last year in which it played so impressive a part. Chief of Staff General Dayan is there with his aides watching an armored assault on a fortified height. As in all branches of the Israel army, the accent is on speed and high mobility. In the Galilee in the north, along the coastal plain and in the south, the fields are covered with a tobacco plant, a relatively new crop to be cultivated on such a scale in modern Israel. Up to a short time ago, Almost all the tobacco used in the local manufacture of cigarettes was imported. Today, the bulk is locally grown, the area under cultivation having jumped to five times what it was two years ago. Engaged in tobacco farming are the Arab community, the Druze farmers, veteran Jewish settlers, and new immigrants. After the rich, fat leaves are picked, they are brought in to be dried. The whole family does the job of stringing the leaves. They are then hung by taut lines on drying racks for the sun to do its part of the job. These are the pleasant patterns made by the drying crop, a familiar sight in Israel's tobacco country during the season.
The dried leaves are then packed in bales, ready to be sent to the factory. Here they are blended. They are then cut and fed into the machine, and from here on, all the processes are mechanical, the grains being rolled tight, wrapped in cigarette paper, and boxed, ready for the smoker. In any country, children love an outing at the zoo, and the youngsters in Israel are no exception. They flock to watch the animals whenever mummy or daddy has a free moment. And they love to watch this creature. A curious bird is the pelican. Its beak holds more than its belly can. But what these youngsters have really come to watch are the new sea lions, which have just arrived at the Tel Aviv Zoo. The Syrian bears are also a great attraction. There are very few in captivity, most of them in Israel. The children find it fun when it's somebody else who is being cleaned and brushed up. And they too think the zebras look like horses wearing pajamas. They find the elephant huge but playful. And they feel sorry for the hungry giraffe, whose food takes such a long time to reach its tummy. 